Hello everybody, Merry Christmas Creators here, welcome back to Last Kid Left in the Woods podcast, episode 17, the last one with these graphics, last time you'll ever see these graphics, is called Lisbon, Lisbon Library, The Old Man and the Rose Tree. So, to explain the title... When I was still in grade school, before I graduated eighth grade, for those of you who call it something different, I used to bike to the nearby town of Lisbon because it was shorter than going in town to Lewiston. And back when kids could go on their bike for three, three and a half miles, like with a handful of change in their pocket to uh, go to a library or get penny candy. So anyways, I would go to this tiniest, sweetest, most beneficial of all libraries I swear I've ever been to. I've been to some gorgeous, amazing libraries, like the one on RISD campus in Rhode Island. Anyways, um, so libraries are my thing. I'm going to have one myself one day. But they used to teach classes on crocheting and all sorts of interesting crafts and stuff at this tiny little, tiny house library, I guess you'd say. It was an amazing Lisbon library. Different from Lisbon Falls. So it's Lisbon Village. Across from a Penny store. And this old man used to walk, like, probably at least a good mile, if not more, from his house, like, Look like Walt Whitman in the pictures, like when he was older with a long white beard, long white hair, mustache. Looked very much like that type of a, a um, solemn type of a character. And he would have a magnifying glass on his person and glasses on as well once he got there. And he walked very slowly and then he would walk back home like in time for whatever. He did this like every time he was there doing that, like during the middle part of the day, every single day that they were open. So that I went. So I, I just always found him fascinating. He just had his head right in the books and he was always researching different roses. And I recently promised myself a rose garden where I just moved to for good. And here comes my big challenge of, like, not future faking myself, my own damn self. Because I've been through so much that has to do with codependency and narcissism and being future faked for many, many years now, over a decade, that I had to start playing. Like, no matter, even though it's extremely heartbreaking for me as a highly sensitive, extra sensitive person and all this stuff, like, it breaks my heart into a million pieces, but I have to future fake now. That's what I started doing to be able to get myself to where I want to be. And I'm going to just fight blood, sweat, and tears to be able to make the vision that I'm starting to paint to you, my small group of listeners at this point so far, um, that I'm very grateful for, uh, to paint that vision for real, IRL, in real life. And I'm putting everything into that. And that's why it took until today to be able to just, like, pump out, like, these five podcasts back-to-back. And I don't have much more time, like, for a couple more days. And then I'll be able to do it again with, like, a new video. I'm going to make myself do that. So my grandparents, I wanted to say, on my dad's side, where it was, like, super religious and strict Catholic, like how I was raised... They come from up north in Maine, like by Canada. And if they would have seen the churches burning, they died many, many years before my mother's parents. If they would have seen the churches burning in Canada, the Catholic churches, they're rolling in their graves. Man, 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 man alive is what I'm trying to say. I can hardly believe that happened in recent history. Anyways, um, my camera's on. I chose to cut my hair like a mohawk so that if I used styling products, I could spike it up as a full, actual, not a faux hawk, like a real 
mohawk that goes like for a few inches all the whole entire length of my head like Statue of Liberty sideways if I wanted to <laughs> so I did that because my other grandmother was adopted from a Canadian orphanage and I believe she was one of almost one of the Mohawk children <laughs> and I did this whole thing this is how I was an activist by cutting my hair into a mohawk and planning music out for my future that I might have the opportunity to sing with a mohawk hairdo. I didn't go out and burn a fucking church because of the mohawk children and the history that we've learned so far in the history. No. I friggin' cut myself a hairdo that's going to make people talk to me about a certain type of thing. That's how you be productively active towards a cause that might actually help to make the future better and not shittier. Okay, talk to you soon. I'll have to carry on the next one.